Uh, last time we discussed Boolean functions uh, with uh, N arguments. That is functions that uh, map uh, tuples of zeros and ones to just zeros and ones. We assumed that uh, there was just a, 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 at least at least one argument for each function. Uh, this requirement is technical, but nevertheless, uh, we will uh, stick to it. So, uh, in fact, uh, we discussed some means to describe a Boolean function, to construct it from some other functions, some so to say pre-existing functions we which we can uh, somehow compute and this means is just uh, the language of uh, boolean circuits let me demonstrate what uh, a boolean circuit may be um, assume that we have a conjunction as a boolean function of two arguments disjunction as another function of two arguments and negation a boolean function of uh, just one argument and now using just these functions uh, we intend to uh, compute xor or uh, just some modular two let me recall the table for values of this function uh, x plus y is zero if uh, both are zero x plus y is zero if both are one you know one plus one uh, make two that is zero modular two and if uh, here we have just one unity one zero then we would obtain uh, one as the value of our function so our goal is to compute uh, this function let us see how can uh, one do that our idea is to write a simple program, a simple program that consists of assignments uh, computing this function. So uh, we will, uh, the, 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 the main idea behind Boolean circuits uh, is as follows. By the way, this is some, uh, some refreshment of what I uh, told you last time. So the main idea of a Boolean circuit is that we are applying uh, no more than one function in every assignment. Uh, for technical reasons, uh, we first of all, we will uh, assign uh, our inputs, that is X and Y. We will assign our inputs to uh, temporary variables t1 and t2 so let t1 let us assign x to t1 and y to t2 and uh, in all the other all the subsequent uh, assignments we will apply uh, one function from our set which is given to us which is primitive to us uh, to one of the uh, temporary variables already defined. So this is the very idea of Boolean circuits. For example, uh, I want to negate one of the previous, I want and I'm able to negate one of the previous temporary variables. Say I can put it this way, T3 is T1 negated. So we see that uh, essentially T3 uh, computes the value of uh, not x. Similarly, let uh, t4 be not t2. t5, t5 is just the conjunction of uh, t1 and uh, t2. No better the disjunction. No, that's it is some other idea. Okay, uh, let us let us take T one and not T two, but not uh, not T two is T four. T one and T four. 
Clearly, T6 will be T2. That is Y and not X. I want Y and not X. T2 and T3. And T7 will be just T5 or T6. So this is a recipe to compute some values subsequently. First of all, take uh, X as T1, Y as T2, then uh, compute the negation of T1 and store it uh, to T3, similarly for T2 and T4. Then take the conjunction of uh, T1 and T4 and uh, store it in T5. What will the result? Uh, what uh, will the result be? Zero. Zero, really? No, there is no reason to have zero here. Let us see. Uh, it is uh, quite easy to notice that uh, the value of every temporary variable is a function of our inputs. So this X and Y are, are, are called inputs. They are called uh, input variables. So every temporary variable, is its value is a function of uh, inputs. Let us see. Let us treat every temporary variable is a function of inputs uh, of course it is somewhat informal but this uh, gives us the main idea about the circuits so uh, t1 is a projector function that returns uh, its first argument similarly t2 is another projection that gives us y but what about t3 what is the value of T3 relative to X and Y? It is not T1, but not X. Brilliant. Similarly, T4 is just not Y. It is just not Y. But what is T5? T5 is uh, something composite, something compound of, uh, of more, than, more than one function application. So it is conjunction. Uh, applied to T1, that is X, conjunction applied to X and uh, applied to not Y. So here basically we have uh, two applications of uh, our basic functions. But this formula, formalism of uh, Boolean circuits um, allows us to, to do this in two steps. So in a few steps, first of all, we compute not, not Y here, and then we compute this conjunction. So the basic idea here is to keep these right hand parts, keep them simple, of some simple form where uh, a primitive function is applied uh, just to, to some temporary variables we have already defined with uh, numbers less than Z of the left hand side. But still, what is T6? Uh, T6 depends of X and Y the following way. Uh, what is that? T2 was Y and uh, T3 was not X. So Y and not X. Mm -hmm. So T7 is the disjunction of the previous two. So it is X and not Y, or alternatively Y and not X. So what is it? What is it? When is this thing true? Let us make, uh, let us make uh, a table of its values, T7 as a function of X and Y. What is it? Assume that uh, X is zero and Y is zero. So here we will have zero, but here we will have what? Still zero. 
Uh, still zero because y is zero and here x is zero. Uh, what if x is zero but y is one? x zero, y one, x zero. So this, the, the left hand side, this left hand term is zero. While uh, y and not x will give us one. Zero or one is one. one. Similarly, when x is uh, 1 and y is 0, we will have that uh, this one, this left hand term is 1, while this one is 0, so still 1. And what if every input is 1? Then we see that not y is 0, not x is 0, so as a result, we will obtain 0. Look, the table is exactly the same as for x plus y. So uh, function T7, the function T7 returns the same value, the same value as X plus Y. So that means that our function uh, T7, the dependence of, uh, the dependence of our sevens, of our sevens temporary variable, on the inputs, this dependence is uh, just like addition, like uh, summing two uh, values together modulo two. Is this idea clear? It appears that every line, every line, every assignment and uh, most strictly every prefix, every uh, initial segment of our circuit computes a function where uh, we, can, we, we have a function uh, corresponding to every line. Every segment, every line of uh, our circuit uh, gives rise to a function, a Boolean function. Uh, of our inputs. And we can say that this uh, circuit computes either all these functions or some of these functions if we specify some temporary variables as outputs. Or by default, by default, we can think that uh, the function computed is just the last one. That corresponds to the last line, last assignment in our circuit. This way, our circuit is a program uh, to compute all these functions. Uh, we can uh, do the same thing formally. We can do the same thing formally. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, this is too uh, useful at this stage. But anyway, uh, let us try in order to demonstrate more formal, more rigorous definition. Uh, so let us formally assign a function, a Boolean function. to a circuit. As uh, I have already said, um, <laughs> in fact, I did that last time, every circuit uh, has some parameters. These are its inputs and uh, the set of basic functions. So uh, this way we are going to say that uh, let let C let C be a Boolean circuit, a Boolean circuit of some inputs. Assume that we have n inputs, not necessarily two inputs, but n inputs of these inputs over over some set of primitive functions. Uh, it may be uh, finite, it may be infinite, it doesn't matter generally, but for every function, 
its rarity, its number of arguments is specified. Uh, much like here we had conjunction as a function of two arguments, disjunction as a function of two arguments, and so on. So for every function, uh, we can um, we can take its number of arguments, its, as they say, arity. So let's see the uh, Boolean circuit of uh, our inputs over this set of primitive functions. Uh, so let us define um, a function, a Boolean function, that is computed uh, by this circuit. In order to do so, um, so what is our goal? Our goal is to define a function g of c, a function g of c, uh, such that uh, it, it maps n arguments, n Boolean arguments, that is our inputs, to some Boolean value. Uh, so the function that uh, our circuit computes, it is the function that C computes. I will do that recursively. Um, recursively on uh, on uh, on the structure of our of our circuit, or in other terms, this can be done the following way: by recursion on the number of assignments. But anyway, anyway, our circuit has the following structure. Uh, so what is that? Our circuit C is uh, as follows. So it is a sequence of assignments. Some uh, right hand side R1 is assigned to T1. Some right hand side uh, R2 is assigned to T2. And so on and so forth. Generally, some I's right hand side is uh, assigned to TI. And uh, the last line where we will obtain our uh, function computed is of this form. So this is our Boolean circuit, just a sequence of um, uh, assignments. But uh, what are our right-hand sides? By definition, uh, we discussed uh, last time, every right-hand side uh, is either is either an input is either an input like say in this situation or it is an application of one primitive function uh, to some uh, temporary variables early defined so we have two cases uh, for every for every i for every i here we have two cases uh, the first case is uh, that our right hand side is just one of our inputs. There exists a J uh, between uh, 1 and N. It is one of our inputs. Or, or uh, our second case. Our second case is when our right hand side is just an application of a function with uh, k arguments there is a function from our set uh, of primitive functions to some k uh, temporary values temporary variables already defined and here it is important this is the important thing look uh, we want to compute ti uh, and uh, when doing so, we are allowed we are allowed to use temporary va variables uh, already defined. That is their uh, indices i one and so on. I k must be strictly less than i. So that is that we have no cycles here. We uh, can use just the values we have already defined. Look, for example, here we are computing T5. 
and we are using uh, T1 and T4 uh, for doing so, but we are unable to use, say, T6 for this purpose because T6 is not yet defined. Not yet defined. Well, this is important. And uh, what shall we do? Uh, we will assume that... Um, uh, okay. We can uh, we can uh, take we can take any prefix any uh, initial segment of our circuit and consider it as uh, another circuit. Every uh, let us denote it uh, CI. Every prefix of a circuit is another circuit. So uh, we can uh, assume that we have already defined uh, we, ha we have already defined functions for uh, all the circuits less than our given C. We will analyze our circuit C. And take uh, and consider and consider its uh, its last line. So uh, we shall analyze two cases. The first case is when uh, our last right hand side is just one of the inputs. Then. We shall define our function g of c that takes all the inputs the following way. It is just a projector function. If, if the last assignment is uh, xg, then uh, our function just returns its j's, j's argument. And the second case. Uh, is uh, when our right hand side is of this form, yeah? Some function, some primitive function has been applied to uh, some uh, previously, some previously defined temporary variables. What should we do in this case? Then in this case, We shall put it the following way. We will compute uh, functions corresponding to uh, our lesser, our shorter circuits of lengths uh, I1, IK. We shall compute these functions, compute their values. And then apply our function f to these values computed. This is exactly, exactly the thing uh, we did here. So we have computed, say, this one and this one, and then apply, uh, apply disjunction to these two values. Is this idea clear? Gentlemen. Is it at least partly clear? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That's nice. So every circuit computes a function. In fact, you can uh, you can obtain more than one function from one circuit. Uh, here, formally, uh, we consider just uh, the function uh, corresponding to the last assignment, to the last line. But it is possible uh, to do so for any any set of assignments. We can take uh, any lines in our program and mark, label the uh, respective temporary uh, variables as outputs. Okay. And now let us introduce two important uh, characteristics of uh, our uh, circuit. These characteristics uh, are similar to, uh, to time and space, which we have in uh, our usual 
computer programming models, time and space. So we shall define uh, the size of our circuit. The size of a circuit C is just the number. It is just the number of its lines, that is, assignments. We shall denote it the following way, as Z size of C. So here, for example, what is the size of this circuit? What is the size of this particular circuit? Isn't it obvious? How many lines does it have? Yes. Mm -hmm, brilliant. So the size of this circuit is S. And if we uh, return to our previous example here, what is the size of this circuit? If this is some C, uh, C prime, say. What is the size of this circuit? Seven. Seven. So, uh, this um, circuit has seven assignments, and the function it computes is addition, modulo 2. Okay, brilliant. And now, let us consider some other uh, some other circuit, apparently uh, computing the same function, and we shall compare that other circuit with this one in size and uh, maybe in other characteristics. Let us do so. Another circuit, uh, C double prime. It will uh, take the same inputs X and Y, and it uh, will use the same primitive functions, conjunction, disjunction, and negation. Uh, so our C prime is the following program, the following uh, sequence of assignments. The following sequence of assignments. So T1 is uh, stores X1, T2 stores x2, t3 is the disjunction of uh, t1 and t2, t4 is uh, the conjunction of t1 and t2, t5 is not t4, that is the negation of our conjunction, and uh, the last one, t6 is t3 and T5. First of all, let us see which function is computed this way. So, uh, which function G1 uh, corresponds to the first line, to this circuit, to this prefix that consists of just one assignment? These are not uh, X1 and X2, but X and Y. Excuse me. Uh, so, uh, G1 of X and Y is what? G1 is a function corresponding to this circuit, the same as we denoted as uh, T1. What is that? X. X. Brilliant, that is just a projector function. G2 is? Y. Y. G3. Conjunction of X and Y. Is it a really conjunction? Is it really conjunction? It is disjunction X or Y, yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what about G4? Now it is a genuine conjunction X and Y. What is uh, G5? 
our conjunction negated. And what is G6? What is it? What should we do? We should apply conjunction to two previous functions. X or Y. X or Y, G3, yeah. X or Y and? Negation of uh, T4, uh, of uh, X and Y. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, what, what is this function? What is that? Well, uh, what is that? It is some familiar function, I think. So when mm -hmm. X and Y are all zeros, here we will have zero, yeah? Mm-hmm. So uh, this will be zero. If x uh, is zero and y is one, here we will have one. Here we will have zero and here we will have one. So it will be one. Mm -hmm. When uh, x is zero and y is mm -hmm. one. And similarly, it is symmetric. So similarly for x being one and y being zero. And when both uh, inputs are one, then we will have one or one that is one here and zero here so as a result zero it is the same as x plus y is it obvious isn't it obvious yes so uh, this function uh, this circuit computes the same function addition the same as we already obtained here. But what is the size? What is the size of this circuit? Six. Mm -hmm. Six, but six is less than seven. So one can think that this circuit is somewhat better than our previous attempt. It is another, another circuit for the same function, but it is better. It has a uh, lower size. It is less. It is a, a better program, more optimal. Is this idea clear? Yes, sir. Uh, but uh, besides size, we have some other important metric concerning our circuits um, size is similar to memory to memories or space used by our program but it is not uh, it is not like time but what is like time let us see first of all i will um, give you some other representation of uh, Boolean circuits as uh, directed graphs. As directed graphs. Uh, I'm not sure if you are familiar with directed graphs, but everything I will uh, do uh, is very, very informal. So I hope that your intuition, your intuition will be enough. Uh, let us do the following. So look at uh, let, look at our circuit C prime. Let us consider the following following structure like uh, like our uh, binary relation diagrams or directed graphs. First of all, first of all, we will uh, plot two points and label them with our input. So these are X and Y. These are X and Y. Okay. Then uh, we will uh, take another points and label them T1 and T2. Look, these arrows, uh, these arrows depict assignment. So X is assigned to T1. Okay. So far, so good. Now we will obtain T3. Uh, but what is T3? Yeah? Uh, T3 is uh, our T1 negated. So we shall place uh, we, we shall place negation to this node of our graph. Likewise, T4 
T4 uh, is our T2 negated diagram. Yes. And where is T5? T5 will be here. It is a conjunction of what? Of T1. Uh, it is important that we can reuse. We can reuse unrestrictedly any value we have computed. This is very important about the circuit. So uh, we can take T1, we have already used, and use it uh, one more time. We can conjunct it, take uh, its conjunction with T4 and label this not T5. Okay. Similarly, uh, we can have T6. What is T6? T6 is just T2. Uh, conjunction T3. Hmm, T6 is ready. And now we can take the disjunction of these two, and this is our in output, T7. Is this idea clear? Mm -hmm. Similarly, we can make uh, such a diagram for our other circuit. Let us do so. So still we have X and Y as our inputs, which are assigned to T1 uh, and T2. Then we are going to compute the disjunction and label it as T3. The disjunction is T3 and then take the conjunction and label it as uh, T4. Mm -hmm. Now let us negate, let us negate uh, this conjunction and label the result as T5. And now we shall take the conjunction of uh, these two things and this will be our in output T6. Look, this circuit is uh, less symmetrically looking. It is le less symmetric than our previous one. But still, it is more effective size-wise. Because here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nodes, excluding the inputs. And here we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six nodes, excluding the inputs. Okay, gentlemen. But uh, now we shall consider the following metric. Uh, the length, the length of the longest, of the longest path from an input to the output. So we shall consider the following characteristic the length of uh, a longest path. Is it clear intuitively what a path is? A path is, uh, is a way in our graph according to our uh, directions, according to our arrows. Is this idea clear? Isn't it? Say here we have a path x, t1, t4, t5. But we are interested in the length of a longest path from n input. Notice that we can have many inputs from n input to the output. What is the length of the longest such path? How many nodes, uh, how many nodes uh, should we uh, should we visit uh, when moving from an input to the output? What is the shortest path from an input to the output? Please find the shortest path. T1, T3, T6. T1, no, we should start uh, from the input. Why? Yeah. X, T1, T3, mm -hmm. 6, 
Yeah, what is the length of this one? One, two, three. Three arrows. The length is three. Yeah. But uh, we are interested in the longest path. What is the longest way uh, to move from an output? For, uh, from an input to the output. By the way, we have other passes of uh, length three. Mm -hmm. Say this yeah. But what about uh, uh, longest? There are two ways from Y to T2 to T4. Mm -hmm. Y to T4. And also from X to uh, T T1. T4, mm -hmm. T5, T6. And what is the longest pass? What What is its length? Uh, okay. How many arrows does it contain? Four. Four. So uh, the length is four. Mm -hmm. This value is known by definition. By definition, is value is no, this value is known as the depth. It is known as the depths of our circuit. It is known as the depths, the longest path. Why we are interested in the longest path? Because this depths is uh, roughly equivalent to uh, our computation time. Look. Assume that there is some signal, electric or otherwise, propagating from inputs to the output. Assume that uh, passing every node requires some time. So, uh, of course, of course, the signal is propagated in parallel. Uh, if we already uh, have some correct value at C2, then at the next instant of time, we will have this value at T3 and T4. But uh, how many time instances, time moments we need in order to obtain the correct value here at T6? In fact, uh, we require uh, four moments, four instances. Because we need four, four instances in order uh, for our signal from X to, to reach T6. Is this idea clear? Mm -hmm. So depth is roughly equivalent to time. And similarly size is uh, roughly equivalent to space. That is memory. Because basically, uh, for example, in order to emulate the circuit uh, in, in your regular computer, uh, you need to memorize its structure to memorize its uh, nodes. So size is roughly equivalent to space, and uh, depth is roughly equivalent to time. Uh, now I will give, first of all, we shall compute um, or, or better, yeah. First of all, let us let us uh, compute the depths uh, in this example. What is the length of the longest pass from an output to uh, uh, for, from an input to the output? The longest. Four. Four it is x t one t three. T six, T seven, four, four, uh, four arrows. So the depth of this circuit is four, similarly to this one. Similarly to this one. So we see that they are depths equivalent. That is neither is better than the other. Neither is better than the other. So they are similar in depth, that is in computation time, but uh, one is better, C, uh, double prime is better size-wise than uh, just C prime. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. And now the formal definition of depth, one that would not 
uh, employ this uh, this graphs without graphs without graphs. How can one uh, define depth without graphs? Recursively, of course. So assume that we have a circuit uh, of the following form. So it is T1 being uh, assigned to uh, R1 being assigned to T1 and so on. So assume that we have some arbitrary circuit of size S. How can we uh, define uh, its depth? First of all, as usual, uh, we shall uh, denote every prefix, every prefix as C2 uh, or respectively CI. That is the prefix that uh, consists of the first of the first uh, I assignments. Yeah. We shall assume that we have already uh, obtain the depths for every uh, less circuit. And now we are going to consider our last our last uh, assignment. So if the first case, if uh, the right hand side is an input, then the depth then the depth of our circuit is just one so everything directly connected to an input has depth one and the second case if uh, here we have some primitive function uh, applied to our previous variables whatever where here we have i1 and so on i k less than i then in this case the depth of our circuit is defined the following way uh, we shall take a maximum we shall take maximum of depths of our previous circuits ci1 and so on where we have restricted to uh, to the first i1 and so on lines and add one so maximum plus one this is the formula is it clear In order to make it more clear, let us apply our formula to an example. So here, let us compute depths. What is that? For this circuit that consists of one assignment, what is its depth? One. One? Exactly. What about this circuit of two assignments? What is its depth? It is one. Why is it one? Because the last, the last assignment is directly connected to the input. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. It is still the first case, so it is one. Mm -hmm. Look here, T3. Here we have T1 and T2, so we need to take one plus uh, maximum of... Uh, of the depth of this line, so to say, and the depth of this line, maximum of one and one. So this is two. 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 Brilliant. T4. T1 and T2. What is the depth? What is the depth of, of two. T4? Two. Of the circuit. Two, exactly. Two. Uh, T5, not T4. So the depth of T4 was uh, 2, two plus 1. So this is 3. Mm -hmm. And what about T6? We have T3 and T5. This is 1 plus oh. maximum of uh, 2. And, uh, three. and 3. So what, what is that? 
4. 4. So the depth is 4. The same as uh, we have computed from our um, informal graph representation. Is this idea clear? Mm -hmm. So these are the two most important measures of uh, algorithmic complexity for uh, Boolean circuits, their size and their depth. Okay. Now let us um, let us study in depth some example, some example of computation with circuits. Uh, of course, as I have uh, already said, we can use our Boolean circuits to uh, compute Boolean functions. And if we have one one output, then every circuit. Uh, computes just one Boolean function, but uh, it is not hard to uh, consider more than one uh, temporary variables as outputs. If we do so, we will obtain functions uh, that uh, return that return uh, a sequence of Boolean values, a sequence of zeros and ones, a tuple of zeros and ones. Uh, for example, then. We can apply our Boolean um, circuits to compute numeric functions. To compute numeric functions, let us see how one can do uh, so. So, numeric functions. With uh, Boolean circuits. Of course, these circuits must be with multiple, multiple outputs. Numeric functions with Boolean circuits. First of all, uh, we will encode numbers in binary form. We will encode natural numbers. in binary form. For example, what is the code for, say, 5? What is the binary representation for 5? Gentlemen. Uh, 1, 0, 1. Brilliant. That's it. Uh, so, our goal will be to add, uh, we want to add uh, two natural numbers. Add two naturals together. Okay. Uh, first of all, we shall start with uh, one bit numbers. For which naturals it uh, suffices to have just one bit to represent them? For which naturals one bit is sufficient? Hey. What? One binary digit, one bit. Zero and one, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let us do so. Uh, how can one uh, add together zero and one? Let us see. Zero plus zero. Uh, and now this plus is not modular two. It is not modular two. So that means that uh, we can obtain a two bit, a two bit value. So uh, let us uh, denote it as add, add one. So 
zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus one is one. One plus zero is one. And the most interesting, uh, one plus one is zero. It is zero. not modular two. Uh, we will obtain a two bit. One, yeah, 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 one zero. One zero. We zero. need a two bit, a two bit number. So that means that this is not just a one binary function. It is a sequence of two binary functions. Uh, generally, generally, if uh, we add together two bits, we will obtain two. Uh, we will obtain two values, two resulting values, two resulting values. So we will. Uh, denote them as z2 and z1 z1 is the uh, lowest bit of the result and of course z2 will be the highest bit of the result like here we have one and zero and here of course we can uh, say that we have zero 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 one zero one. Is this idea clear? Yes. We have two Boolean functions. Two Boolean functions. One to compute uh, the uh, lower bit and uh, one to compute the higher bit of the result. Let us see uh, how they depend on the inputs. So zero 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 one one zero one one. Uh, the lower bit is of course zero when we add in two zeros one in this case and zero here. And what about the high bit? It is zero in all these cases and one here. Is this idea clear? This is Z2 yes. and this is Z1, yeah? Yes. And now, gentlemen, which uh, known functions have we obtained? This is a table for what? Zero, one, one, zero. Addition modular two. And what about this one? Zero, zero makes uh, zero, one zero, implication. one. What? Implication? Really? Multi, multi, multiply. Conjunction, logical end, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it appears that we can obtain our circuit the following way. Uh, let us uh, let us plot the graph. Not our usual sequence of assignments, but uh, the graph. It will be easier. So we have X and Y as our inputs. Uh, first of all, we will assign this to some T1 and T2. Then we will compute. We will compute the uh, conjunction. We will compute the disjunction. Uh, this junction. Then where can we obtain? Um, we will negate our conjunction, and then here we can already obtain our uh, our 
sum. Here it is, yeah? X plus Y. Because X plus Y is what? It is X uh, or Y and, and not X and Y. Do you agree? Yes. This is uh, the circuit we already had. And we can label this uh, node as our output Z1. And where is Z2? Z2 uh, is, has been already computed here. Here it is. Is this idea clear? Mm -hmm. The only difference with our previous circuit uh c uh, double prime with our previous circuit c double prime here it is the uh, only difference is that we now have two outputs two outputs mm -hmm. so this way we were able to add two one bit numbers to sum two one bit numbers hmm that's nice uh but uh how can we add uh more than one bit numbers say two bit numbers what about summing two bit numbers So here we have two inputs, x2, x1, this is the high bit, the lower bit, and we should add it to uh, some other input. How long the result, uh, may the result be? What do you think? What about the length of the result? How many bits should we provide for that? Three. Three bits? Yeah, brilliant. We can have a three-bit number. That's it. For example, if we add together, say, uh, one zero and one one, the result will be two one plus zero. three is... One zero one. One zero one. It will be five. Two plus three is five. Okay. Hmm. But uh, how can we compute it? In fact, if we try to uh, construct a, a table of our values, uh, this uh, will get uh, more and more, more and more complicated. But there is some uh, regularity. There is some regularity here. Of course, uh, by the way, how many inputs can we have? How many inputs can we have? How many inputs okay. are possible? If we have, uh, if, if we have four inputs, then uh, how many values can they take? 16. 16, yeah. So this this table would be quite uh, it would require quite a lot uh, of space. Hmm. So we are not not intended uh, to uh, to place it here in full, but nevertheless, if we have all zeros, clearly all the results will be zero. If we, for example, have lower bits being ones and high bits being um, uh, one and zero, so the result will be what? Zero. Two plus two plus one. So here we have zero. Here we have one and one. <laughs> And so on. So adding this table uh, would require some, uh, would require uh, a great deal of work. But 
How can we simplify it? Uh, can we somehow uh, can we somehow uh, reduce reduce this task of uh, summing together two bit numbers to summing one bit numbers? Assume that we are able to uh, sum uh, one bit numbers. Can, can can we use it? Can we reuse it a circuit uh, for that? Okay, if we add x1 and uh, y1 together, we would obtain some, uh, we would obtain some uh, lower bit and some uh, higher bit. And this high bit must be added to uh, this one, th th these two bits as uh, overflow, as an overflow. Is this idea clear? Yes. So, in fact, in fact, we need to be able to sum three, not two, but three bits. Not two, but three bits, one being the overflow. Let us uh, consider the uh, respective circuit. So, what do we have? We have x. First of all, let us create a table. We have x, y, and we have overflow. I will uh, denote it as v. The overflow uh, from our previous from our previous addition. We have x, y, and the overflow v. And the results uh, will be, uh, of course, z2 and z1, our respectively higher and lower bits. Let us see what can we have. 0, 0, 0. Of course, there are eight, eight possible inputs. 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, um, that's enough for 0, 1, 0, 0, uh, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. Now let us see the results. What is it? 0 plus 0 plus 0 is? 0. Zero, zero. Yeah. Zero plus zero plus one. Zero. Zero, one, yeah? Yes. Just one unity here. What is the result? Zero, one. One plus one plus one uh, makes? Zero, one. Zero, one or two. Yeah. Here still zero, one. Two unities. One zero, yeah. yeah. Still two units. So what do we have here? One zero. Mm -hmm. And three units make one. three. One, one one. Yeah. Here it is. Hmm. Interesting. But uh, which uh, familiar Boolean functions? Which familiar Boolean functions do we have here? First of all, let us look at uh, the lower bit. It appears that our lower bit is just our sum modulo 1. It is not hard to see that it is x plus y plus v. Look, uh, it gives us a 1 if and only if we have 1 or 3 units here. So it gives us one if and only if we have oddly many uh, unities. Is this idea clear? Mm -hmm. It is our known sum 
modulatu. But what about that to? How does it relate to our inputs? It is interesting. Now it is not just conjunction. Now it is not just conjunction uh, as uh, we saw in our previous case. It is not conjunction. It is similar to conjunction, but it is not conjunction. Look, for example, uh, that uh, we have one uh, even if we have zero, but we have two ones. When do we have one here? How can we you describe it in words? When do we have one here? We have one here. If and only if. Look. Three zeros, zero. Two zeros, zero. One zero one. One zero one. One zero one. Zero zeros one. When do we have one here? If and only if? We have two one. What? If we have more ones, if we have more ones, then zeros, among the inputs, is this idea clear? Yes. In mathematics, this is known the majority function. It is very important. The majority function. Uh, the majority function for three arguments, uh, it is denoted the following way. Maj, majority of uh, X, Y, and V. The majority function. So our majority function uh gives us uh, the value which takes majority if we have more ones the value will be one if we have more zeros the value will be zero let us see how can one uh, compute this majority function there is a way to do so with conjunctions and disjunctions and there is a way to do so with conjunction and uh, sum modulo 2. Uh, with uh, conjunction and disjunction, the formula is as follows. When do we have uh, more uh, unities than zeros? When either x and y are true, then we will automatically have at least two unities. Do you agree? Yes. If X and Y are true, we have at least two unities among the arguments. If X and V are true, if X and V are true, we will have uh, at least two unities. If uh, Y and V are true, we will have at least two unities and vice versa. If we have more unities than zeros, then we have at least two unities. So either X uh, and Y or X and V or Y and V are unities. Is this idea clear? Mm -hmm. The alternative way employing, uh, employing addition modulo 2, our sum modulo 2, XOR is a basic function is as follows x uh, and y plus x and v plus y and v so we we have three units everything here will be <coughs> one and we will have one plus one plus one which is one if we have just two units 
we will have one unity here and two zeros. One plus zero plus zero is one. And if we have less than two unities, uh, every term here will be uh, zero. So we will have zero. Is this idea clear? Mm -hmm. So this gives us the following, uh, the following circuit for adding three bits where we can take a uh, conjunction and uh, addition modulo two as our basic functions. So let uh, conjunction and addition modulo two be our basis. So uh, we shall consider the following uh, sequence. The, the following circuit, three bit, three bit summator, three bit summator A. Here it is. It is a circuit that takes uh, three inputs, X, Y, and overflow, and uh, which is defined the following way. Uh, we shall uh, take no, uh, first of all, some technical work. T1 is X, T2 is Y, uh, T3 is our over, overflow. And then we have two outputs, Z1, the lower bit. The lower bit is just the sum of X plus Y plus V. So in order to do so, we will uh, need... Uh, we will need another temporary value, T4. T4 is, say, uh, X plus Y. And Z1 is our X plus Y, that is T4, plus uh, the overflow. This is one output. And Z2 is another output if, uh, if we take, uh, excuse me, let us take not uh, not uh, conjunction, but uh, majority. But majority as our uh, as our basic function. Let us take not conjunction, but majority. We know that majority is computable uh, with uh, conjunction and addition. Let us take majority. Let us make majority as our uh, majority of three arguments. Let us take majority as our basic function. So we can just apply this majority function to T1, T2, and T3. Is this idea clear? These are our outputs. We can uh, consider a graph for this circuit. X, Y, uh, X, Y, and Z. Here uh, we will do the following. Use addition. To obtain Z. One, and then we are going to uh, compute majority. This is our Z two. By the way, majority can be uh, considered as as a circuit itself. Which one? What is the circuit for majority? It is not hard to uh, consider a circuit for majority. Let us call its inputs A, B, and C. And the circuit for majority is as follows. First of all, uh, we shall compute the conjunction of A and B. Then the conjunction of A and C. Then uh, the conjunction of B and C. And then we will add all them together. We will add this together. This is our majority. 
If we want to take a conjunction as a primitive operation, according to this formula. Is this idea clear? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, constructed a circuit. We have constructed a circuit of adding three bits together. And our next goal for our next lecture is to uh, somehow uh, pick this, uh, this circuits together to construct an adder, a summator, summator for uh, integers of arbitrary lengths for adding n bits numbers together. Do you have any questions?